mercy and discipline. God's mercy and discipline. Amen. God's mercy and discipline. The only reason humanity is still alive, amen, or survive to this point after thousands of years is because of God's mercy. If God was just a disciplinary without mercy, none of us will make it. We believe wrong, we think wrong, we speak wrong, we get into things we shouldn't do. And as you'll see, God deals with all such things. There's a couple of scripture I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to share them in a couple of different ways. And I want to show you first just a verse to understand the importance of God's mercy. If we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 94. Book of Psalms, chapter 94. We're going, to, we're going to spend some time in that book, but I just want to get a verse out of it for now. In 9 and 4, let's, let's look at verse um, 8 and 9. Amen. The scripture reads, and this was a set of people in, 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 in Israel doing a set of things that they should not be doing. Actually, I'll pick it up from verse 7. The scripture said, Yet they say, the Lord does not see, Neither does the Lord of Jacob, amen, notice, notice it, notice the things they were doing. So the psalmist asked them to consider this. He said, consider and understood and understand this. You stupid ones among the people, amen, and you self-confident fool, when, when will you become wise? He went on to say, he who plant the hairs, amen, shall he not hear? He who form the eyes, shall he not see? Interesting. Amen. You got the one who give you ears to hear and eyes to see. You don't think he, he, if he can do it to you, he has already conceptualized it? Don't you think he's seeing and hearing everything? Mm -hmm. Amen? So when you're saying, you know, we're doing these wrong things and, um, you know, we will get away with it, you, got, you are very, very, very wrong. And verse 10 went on to say, He will discipline and instruct the nations, amen? Shall he not punish, amen? So God sees everything, hears everything. He got deadly and, 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 he, and he's Lord of everything. If he's seeing and hearing everything, he's seeing you doing wrong, won't he punish it? So you won't get away with it. So then, how do we then avoid the punishment? Mm. God's what? Mercy. Amen. How do we then, amen, avoid it? Why don't God just punish us? It's the scripture we just read, Isaiah, amen, chapter 30, verse 80. God said, amen, I want to be gracious to you. I long, amen, to be merciful what? to you. He said, I long to be merciful to you. It's not he's not seeing everything and hearing everything. He does. But his desire is not to punish you, it's to what? Be merciful to you. We say amen. We say thank you, Jesus. Jesus. If God was to pay you back, I have a brother Yahweh, every time I call him Yahweh, I say, how are you, my brother God? Amen? He got very good. He got very blessed. Amen? Far better than I deserve. That's mercy. That's mercy. He knows it. He said, I'm experiencing a state and a way of life far better than I deserve. No matter where I call him, say, so how are you, my brother? He said, good. He said, Bishop. I am far better than I deserve. Yeah. And this is because of God's work. mercy. It is because he didn't see it. David said, you fool from self-confidence. When will you become wise? If you can hear, then the one who creates you can what? Hear. Far better than you. Can he give you hear? Mm -hmm. If you can see, then the one who creates you what? But then why is he punishing you? <laughs> we see sometimes people are doing terrible things. Why don't God punish them? 
Why is he punishing them? He longed to rise up to show them what? Mercy. Mercy. In Chronicles, he said, I did not make life to destroy it. Amen? He made life that it should keep going. However, he's a God of righteous, righteousness. He does not let the life, amen, that keep doing all the creator keep doing it. He has a way of changing that. Amen? But God's natural response, amen, is to be merciful. Now, we as a people, as a civilization, we love mercy. We love receiving it, especially from God and others. And God is very big in this. He said, amen? He said, I don't want your judgment. I want what? Mercy. He sets the temperature for this. He said, what I want when you deal with people, yourself, and things, you must be merciful. Some of us, we are good at being merciful to others, but we are, we're merciless against who? Mm -hmm. Yourself. You mutilate and you're immortal unto yourself. You can show others mercy, but you give yourself up. No leniency. If God can give you mercy, you have to give yourself also what? Mercy. mercy. Amen? If God can see the craziness we do and be merciful, as you'll see, the Lord Jesus will set this stage. He expects us also to be what? Merciful. And especially for the church, the Lord Jesus was following as you always do. He followed the will of God as he said, I didn't come to do my will, but the will of the Father. And they show you this theme and this principle and this pattern, amen, being exhibited and maintained by the Lord Jesus and demonstrated and taught by the Lord Jesus. If we go to the book of St. Luke, chapter 6. Are we coming back to Psalms? Not right now. We will at some point. We have a lot more work to do in that particular verse. Look, we're going to talk about God's mercy and God's discipline. In fact, where my emphasis is going to be is on God's discipline, but I wanted you to understand, let's call it the environment that this discipline must operate in. The many of us sometimes, we are very disciplined and we want to discipline others and help with discipline, but you lack the, what I call the foundation of it, which is mercy. Discipline should operate in the environments of mercy. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, God was talking to fathers. He said, fathers, do not provoke, amen, or exhaust you, your, 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 your children, amen. He said, well, raise them and train them, amen, in the discipline, amen, and the love of the Lord, in the ways and the law of the Lord. He said, it must be done, amen, to develop them in the love of the Lord, amen. In uh, Luke, as I said, chapter 6, I want to read 35 and um, 36. The Lord was decreed into the church, and this extent to all humanity, how we are to be, and amen, what's the author of our, of our, 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 amen, of our fate, amen, and the author of all creation, what he's like, the characteristics of God, and what are the characteristics we are supposed to exhibit. The scripture read, Amen. But love your enemy and be kind and good, Amen. Doing favor so that someone, Amen, derive benefit. He said, "Not just doing things, doing things that someone get what from it, benefit, Amen." He went on to say, "From them, and lend expecting and hoping for nothing in return, but considering, Amen, nothing as loss." And despairing, amen, of no one. He said, this is the, how you're supposed to be, amen. Love your enemy, amen. Do things that benefit others, amen. Don't, if, don't expect when you do something, well, I do this for you, so you should do something back for me. The Lord Jesus said, no, amen. He went on to say, and then your recompense, your reward will be great, rich, amen, strong. He went on to say, intense, abundant. Abandoned, amen. And you will be sons of the Most High. He said, You will be sons of your father. He went on to say, I'll tell you what, how do you know you'll be sons of your father? Look what he is like. He went on to say, For he is kind and charitable and good. He's, this is God characteristic, amen. He went on to say, And to the ungrateful and the selfish and the wicked. Even when you're wicked and you're selfish, God is still kind and what? Charitable, extending His grace to you again and again and again. 
So the Lord Jesus was setting the standard for the church, what God is like and how we are supposed to operate. And verse 36, we're going to say, So be merciful, sympathetic, amen? Tender, responsive, and compassionate, even as your Father, amen? Even as your Father is all these. So you're not even examining something of your own. He's going, you're doing what your father is. There's a one thing, wonderful thing about God. Does God expect you to do this without giving you something? Because you won't make it. You'll try. We can try to be tender and responsive and kind and do things to help people. But you'll find you get tired. You'll do it one time, but then you get what? Fed up. You'll do it two times, and then they'll do something you don't like, and you'll stop. No, this is God's natural spirit. He got, he got, this is why at the end, first Jesus tell them what they have to do. Then he went on to say, Amen. Then you'll be sons of the most high, he said, for he is kind and charitable and good, Amen, to the ungrateful and self, Amen, and selfish and wicked. And he, then he went on to tell them, you know, so be merciful, sympathetic, ten, tender, responsiveness, compassionate, even as your father is all these. He gets you want to know what God is. God is tender and compassionate even to the wicked and the ungrateful. He is merciful. He said, I love you to be. This is one of the things that drives the devil mad. He tempt man. He went out of his way to contaminate him. Now you want God to execute what? Punishment. But God is constantly, the Bible says, rising up and sitting at the edge of the sea, going, I, I am going to be merciful. The enemy is going to, what else do I need to do to get you to punish them? Amen. This is how Jesus came. Man had become so wicked, like the book of Genesis, chapter 9, the Bible said, Man was so wicked, God regret he created man kind of devil. God, you have to act. He got okay, I will act, but I'll take out the punishment that they should get on my own son. These are mercy. And when we read, like we just read in Luke 6, 35 and 36, you see, God is just so merciful. So compassionate, even to the wicked, even to the ungrateful. And for the church, this is the expectation. How are we going to do it? There's only one way it can be done. The same thing allow God to be this way and do this, you have to have. This is what the Bible said. The same very spirit and life Jesus have, who have? You have. So it's not something you act. It's something that God is, you got. That's why you can do it. It's not of your own, not in your own strength and ability. You might do it once or twice. You'll never be able to keep it up. Then how do you ever keep it up? Because the very life that allowed Jesus and God to do this, you have. The same life. This is why God said, anyone who don't have my Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit of Jesus, he goes, you know, belongs to me. You can't do the things I want you to do. You might be good today, but not tomorrow. You might be good this hour, but not the next hour. Because you'll be good, but what when somebody is ungrateful? You'll be good, but what when somebody is selfish? You still, you, in essence, you, go, you have to have something in spite of what people do. It won't change you because who you are. But if I'm not that, you see, when you don't do the things that I want you to do, I'll revert to what I am. So the very spirit that makes God, whether he's dealing with an ungrateful or a selfish or a wicked person, he remains a God, love. He remains a merciful. No matter what the situation or circumstance, God remains a merciful. Same, the same, same yesterday, today, no matter what's going on, you're wicked, you're ungrateful, you're selfish. Doesn't matter what you do. He's still the same. merciful. Mm -hmm. It is the expectation of the church. And why is it? If God had just, just tell us to do this knowing the way we are, this would be unrighteous of God. But God, I will give you a spirit that is merciful in all our situation, event, circumstance. It's why Stephen, even though they're stoning him, he goes, what? Forgive them. You think it's natural for somebody to be so wicked to you like Jesus? You go, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. No, you have to have a spirit that's that way already. A state, a nature. That has to be a natural way. In essence, you don't have another way. This is what the church has received. This is what the church has received. A spirit that to love your enemy, to keep doing good, not just good, your good has to be able to benefit what? Others. He said, others must derive benefit from your good. So for the church, the part of being a Christian, your life, others have to what? Benefit from. If others is not able to derive or draw benefit from your life, your goodness is not expanding in the way how it should, in an effective way. 
The very spirit that God gives his body to learn to, you must learn to walk and live habitually, constantly exhibiting, moving, and living in the spirit that others can derive what? Benefit from. Benefit from. No matter where you go, what you're doing. These are the mercies of God and the standard and the way and the expectation and the call and the gift God gives the church of mercy. Now this side you've received. We love to receive mercy. Others like to do it. This is the standard of our family. This is the standard. However, yet you'll see in the church, so many times this is not taking place. Why? If they have received the Spirit of God, these mercies of God, these behaviors and patterns, why can't we exhibit it all the time? Which brings us to the second component, the discipline of God. I'll say it another different, a different way. The redundancy of God. You have to get to a place where this is not something you're trying to do. It's who you are. If that's something you don't have an option of doing, that's just the way you operate. To get here, amen, the discipline of God will need to work through you, need to be wrought through you to get into this place, which is where we're going to spend most of our time in, in, this, in, in, in this sharing of this process. As I said, in my experience, including myself, we love the mercies of God. We love Isaiah 30, verse 18. Lord, I am so grateful and thankful, amen, that you long to be, amen, gracious and merciful to me. Lord, I love it that you like to rise up to what? Be merciful to be compassionate to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you also for granting me the grace to teach me to stay, to become susceptible for your what? Graciousness and your strength and your salvation continuously. But you'll find the Lord wants a culture, a nation, a family to operate in this place all the time. And to do this, amen, mm -hmm. the print, one of the principles he uses or the methodology is called discipline. You go, I'm going to teach you how to be in this way habitually, to have redundancy in this area. We don't like that component. But it's the only way, the best version of humanity that truly represents God, which is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. Man is making the image and like this, meaning man is made to be what? Merciful. But when you read through history, you see mercy? <laughs> you, would think, you, oh, you would think God make us in the opposite. Mm. There must be no mercy. Amen. Hate your enemy. Do not do things that benefit God. Take everything and be ungrateful, be selfish, be covetous, the opposite of these characteristics. These things we have learned, and this is part of the infection of sin, God has to get out of us. Is why the Bible said, Amen. The rod can drive the evil away from you. Away from you. So you get into a place that you become beneficial to your family, your friend, humanity, and to the kingdom of God. In Christianity, this part of the um, teaching, we like to resist, but it's, it's the only way to move forward. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. Any Christians, God of many children, but the Bible teaches in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7 to 9, Jesus came to bring sons, amen, into glory. To become, a, if, we are all God's creation, and when you are born again, you become a child of God. But to start to operate, when a child starts to transition from child to sonship, he or she has to become acquainted with discipline. If that you will remain a child. In the book of Galatians, Paul said, if the heir to the kingdom, the one who's going to inherit it, everything, remain a child, he always need a disciplinary, a guardian to take care of the business because the undisciplined person, you cannot put nothing in the hand. If you put the inheritance in the hand, they will lose it all. Because to manage, whether it's your home, your life, your body, your family, your business, you need to be what? Mature. You need to have some, you know, some, some abilities that you're able to exhibit, amen, mm -hmm. habitually. You need to be able to stay on top of something, do some things timely, timely, and so forth. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 5, the apostles was talking to them. 
I'm actually, let's start from verse 4 because I love the way how oh, um, Paul, Paul, um, actually, we'll pick it from verse 3 because the author, which is Jesus, we should follow his pattern as usual. So in verse 3, before Paul starts to deal with them, and he speak, he's dealing here with the, with the Hebrew church. He goes, I want you to understand what you're going through. And I want you to see the, the pattern God is using that you are following, what he went through. And if you don't go through it to this level, but you have to go through a similar level amen, to get the mercies of God to come through in an effective way where people can get benefit. And that is an effective way, but in a, in a repeated way. It should happen when? Is it sometime? It should happen on Sunday. We should be like God. And he said, doing this, you'll be like your father in heaven. In Matthew 5, 48, he also said, do these things, amen, to, 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 uh, as your father in heaven does. So these behaviors or patterns should be there when? All the time. All the time. And when it's not, it's because the principle of redundancy is not even yet wrought through you. It hasn't been worked through you. You still have inconsistency, amen. You still have some sporadicness happening. Does this make sense in your life? And that, that little sporadic way of living has to change. It has to change that you have some consistency in your, in your life. So in, in verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 12, the apostle said, Amen. Just think of him, Amen, who, in, amen, who endured, Amen, from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter aspect. Uh, amen. Of, where am I? Sorry, I lose myself in my Grievous. own script. Hmm? Grievous. Uh, yeah, sorry, I see where I am now. Yeah. From sin as such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. He went on to say, reckon up. He said, Had this all up, amen, and consider it all in comparison with your own trials. Mm -hmm. He said, In the things that you are going through, I want you to consider your Lord and all the things he had to go through, amen. I, with sinners, amen, all the hostility, amen, and the opposition they give him, you compare his trials to, reckon, amen, to rectify you to God, to get you forgiven with what you are going to go through. Mm. Amen? And he went on to say, so that you may grow weary, amen, so you may not grow weary, amen, or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your mind. So he said, when the discipline of you start, when you start to go through yours, just compare it to Jesus. Because you will never go to that level, amen, of experiencing where you have to go through to get this process wrought into you properly. Because you're just typically doing it for you so you can get the benefit. Jesus did it for all, <coughs> all of humanity. All of humanity. And as a result, the Bible said, amen, God wanted to make sure the author, amen, of our salvation was thoroughly what? Dealt with. See, of all of humanity, I want to give you the full range, not in part. You're not going to deal with some things in part. You see, you're going to deal with it thoroughly. See, you say you're going to get the full range of it. The full range of it. Amen? So verse 4, when that said, You have not yet struggled and fought agonizing, amen, against sin, nor have you yet re well, it's a resist with, st with stood to the point of pouring out your own blood. He said you never had to fight sin to resist sin to the point that you have to what? Pour out your own blood. But Jesus had to fight sin to the point that he had to get his blood completely what? Pour it out. Imagine you have something in you fighting you so far that the only way you can escape it, we're talking to the church about it this morning, you have to get your blood completely what? Poured out. You see, we don't quite go do that because we get something, we get the substitutions. Do you understand? Eager to, in essence, we get the effect of the cause that he go through. Do you understand this? <laughs> If blood, without we going through the pouring out of the blood, we get the sub so what? substitution. Can you see this principle? But for him to escape it, he had to go through it. He had no substitution. So he had to get his blood poured out. So Peter wanted them to get perspective. He got, you have not yet struggled and fought, amen, agonizingly against what? Sin. When sin starts to fight with us, what, what can we just do? Substitute. Mm. Can you see this principle? Mm -hmm. And it's called in the cross. Mm. We're, we're, you see, Jesus 
just couldn't do this. He had to what? Endure it. Endure it. Mm -hmm. Submit. Sin is telling him to do everything. And he had to what? Endure. There's no way around it. There's no way. He just had to trust God and God only. God, God I'm, I'm enough. I got you. you go, do you see what sin is doing to me? <coughs> I got you. It was so bad. He, at one point, he thought he completely was given over to sin. He got, my God, my God, why have you what? <coughs> forsaken me. <coughs> forsaken me. We don't struggle with sin. When we start to struggle with sin, I hope you know this, this is principle of Christianity. And even though you now have the resurrection life, does this mean you won't struggle with sin from time to time? Mm -hmm. Yes, you will. But what do you do? Substitute. You substitute. You substitute. Amen. You thank God for the resurrection blood and you thank God, amen, for the cold death with Jesus, the one who struggled. Amen. In Jesus' name. To God be the glory. Amen. So, so the apostle said, You have not yet struggled, Amen, and fought agonizingly against sin, nor have you yet, Amen, resist and withstood, Amen, to the point of pouring out your own blood. Yeah. No. Imagine, I don't know, I heard something, let, let's say I'm making some, let's say you got poison ivy yeah. or something yeah. on you, yeah. and it's scratching you or so bad and itching that you want to get rid of your own skin. You just want just, just to escape the pain. Just to escape the pain. As soon as we start to feel that, we can just what? Pick up the cross. Amen. We can just pick up the cross. As soon as we start to feel sin is trying to have its way with us, amen. We pick up the cross to stop it. And then to go forward, we have a what? Another life. Another life. But God made Jesus what? Endure it. Say, no, 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 no. No substitution. You must endure it. Yep. You must endure it to the very what? End. Because I'm going to put the full punishment of everything you're exhibiting on you. Mr. President, can I just mention something? We just read that scripture. Greater is he that is in it that he is in the world. You have already overcome. It's like Jesus was fighting the ultimate heavyweight. He beat the heavyweight. There was no one to beat the heavyweight. And we face the same heavyweight. So we just call Jesus who already beat him. We, we can't beat him, but somebody has already beat him and will beat him again and again Amen. and again. Amen. 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 The same thing that had man trapped for thousands of years, that man, the Bible said, all their life, they could not get past it. They live in fear. They know all the evil they're doing and they know the consequence of it is death. Because God make it very clear. The soul that sin has to die. But there's no way to get past it. You can't. This is why in Romans 7, Paul got, you mean? I'm wretched. I hate myself. He got, I can't stop sinning. I know the consequence of sinning, but I can't what? Stop it. He got, I know I should do good, and I also know the consequence of good, but the good I should do, I can't do. And the thing I know that's going to get me killed, I can't what? Stop doing it. Perfect. He said, what a wretched man I am. I'm so doomed. I know I'm going to die and I can't stop what's making me going to die. He said, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He's the only one, amen, could have contained the life. He's the only one could have controlled sin. He's the only one can control sin. Amen. So, this is, this is the one that follow. Oh, you don't understand Jesus, but please understand this. Though Jesus was contaminated with sin, yet, amen, he did not let sin what? Dominate. Dominate him. He did not let the thing sin was telling him to do, the impression and suggestion have its way. Correct. He paid a price of the thing sin was doing, but is it because he followed sin? No. Why? Why did he pay the price? Because yeah. of what, what we let sin do through us. Do you understand this process? The Bible says he was tempted in every way. Yes. The very, by this way, we see the great high priest that the very sin that we submit to had him, but Jesus didn't let sin what? Control him. And though he didn't commit none of the sin because of sin, because now he has the very, this is his human part, the very sinful blood that is in human that was in him, he paid a price for it, even though he didn't act on it. 
But because he shared the same what? Line that we have. So he paid a price for it. So the innocent paid for those that are not innocent. That is us. But he was tempted. Is it he didn't want to do some of these things? Yes. But he resists until the time come when he can be freed what? from it, when the sin can be poured what? out of him. And then this is why he, he said to the Lord, Amen. Glorify me as I had what? Before. Return the life I had before I take on this sinful life. He said, everything you have asked me to do, I do. Now glorify me as I was what? Before. Put back my life without sin. Amen? Amen. Now, as a result of that, we get the glorified life. Amen? And we now have, what we simply have is simply, this is what the cross does. Every time that sin life tries to rise up, we just put the cross, which means what? It has been poured out. My wife always showed me what something's called, I can't remember the name of the day, I have a uh, saying they do together, pour it out. What the cross does for us, when sin tries to move up on us, what does it do? Pour it out. We have the ability, because now we have the resurrection. Here's the funny thing. Why couldn't you pour out the sinful life before? It was our only life. You would be done. <laughs> if you pour it out, you don't have an option. Exactly. So as bad as it is, it is still your one what? Life. Mm -hmm. But now we have what? A second life. So as a result, when the sinful life tries to act up, we just what? Pour it out. Though I pour it out, I still live. It's right in, 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 in the epistle of, of John, you got, amen, and, and, and in Revelation, you got, amen, I am he who was, and now is, and now live in the eternity of eternity. I have poured out the sinful life, and now I have what? Resurrection life. Mm -hmm. Now please be understand this, guys, we're the church running into trouble too. We do have the resurrection life. But why is we still in this body? This body is still connected, Amen. To that sinful life that if you don't pick up the cross that pours it out, that sinful life can rise up to interrupt your new life. Mm -hmm. Until the millennium, amen, when we receive our new bodies that have no association with that old life, that sinful life is always there. Amen. If you don't know how to pick up the cross that pours it out, amen, it can give you trouble. Because please understand what has to happen. If you fail to pour it out, now you have to get to what? What did the Lord have to do? Struggle. Resist it. Perfect. It will try to do what it needs to do, and you must now what? Resist it. The church shouldn't be fighting and resisting. Because if you are operating in your new life, you don't even have time to resist it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And if it's some reason it invade or can we slip sometime, this is when you pick up the cross to what? Pour it out. He said, have you had to resist sin to the point that you go, I need to get rid of it? Perfect. I just need to get rid of it. Before Christ come, we are, str we are struggling with it. Can't get rid. It's why I believe many times, sometimes, sometimes we go, how could someone take their own life? You have no idea how tormenting they might have been through the spirit of sin. They are so tormented sometimes the thing what they don't know, if sin is to, because sin has infested the blood, if sin is tormenting you in the body, when you're out of the body, does it go away? No. The Bible says if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're being harassed and torment here and what? After. after. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. I literally need that life to be poured away from me and a new life to be what? Established in me. So the scripture said, listen. I don't care what you're going through. This is, this, and the scripture is strictly to the church. Because they have another life now. They have the resurrection life. Mm -hmm. you, go, you will not resist to the point that you need to pour it out. Because you have the cross that you don't have to keep it in that long. You should pour it out what? Immediately. Mm -hmm. Or very quickly. Because you have another way of living now. Perfect. Before you had no other way to live. If you, the only way you might have tried, but still don't escape. Well, I'll, I'll try to get, I'll, I'll uh, suicide or whatsoever, I, I'm getting out of the body that we are trapped in, but it's still in the soul. You got it out of one container, but it's still in the next container. Perfect. You still have the life. He's still there. I need it poured out. 
of my spirit life and my body, amen, through the cross, in the name of Jesus. You could say the cross is like a sanctifier, a sanitizer. It pushed that thing that you struggle with, amen, away. Anyway, let's continue. I want to get through just this 311. Verse 5 says, which is where I want to pick it up. The Bible said, And have you completely forgotten the divine word of appeal, amen, and encouragement in which you are reasoned with and addressed it as sons? He said, have you forgot the divine call? God said, you are my sons. Now this is from both the, the scripture referred to male and female here, amen, as sons. He said, have you forget, amen, the divine reasoning where God, amen, is speaking to you as sons, appealing to you and saying, you are my sons, amen. My sons, do not think lightly or scorn my, amen, or scorn to submit to the correction and discipline of the Lord, amen. Nor lose courage and give up and faint, when you are reproved and corrected by him. God said, I am treating you as a son, so don't lose courage. Don't faint. And all of this you'll see, this discipline is to make sure you don't play with what? Sin. In essence, God is trying, this is what the discipline is for. The, the major focus you'll find of this teaching, what is the use of discipline? The purpose of discipline is for growth and development. God wants you to learn, amen, how to keep the blood that Jesus that He poured out of Jesus after Jesus has struggled with it, amen. He had poured out of Jesus, how to keep it out to you and how to operate in the resurrection. I don't care how many form, at the end of the day, this is one of the major goals. You must keep the sinful life out of you allow to operate in the new life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible said, The old is gone, the new has come. For anyone who has been engrafted into Christ, the old life is gone, the new has come. All the old spiritual defect and moral defect has been gone, the new has become. Can you understand this? So all your discipline is to try to operate in these two paths. I must keep the sinful life poured what? Out of me, by Christ. You didn't pour it out to yourself. It's Christ's cross who does it. If you cannot pick up the cross or apply the cross to you, you cannot stop the whole one. Life. You understand? They have, they have some, 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 some product now. I think one of them is called Flex Seal. But like, if you have a hole in your roof, it seals it. You need the life of Christ, in it, the cross of Christ, to stop your whole what? Sinful life, so you can stop. When you see a Christian and they're not growing, what do you think is going on? Yes, they might not have the drive, or actually if they're operating their life, they'll naturally have the drive or the ambition. But most of the time, it's because the fight is between what? They're stuck in Romans 7. They have their whole life that is constantly they're fighting against. And they which stop them from getting familiar with what? The new life. And the old life, they're, cre they're fighting so much sin, they're always feeling guilty and shame. And they're never moving from strength to strength and glory to glory. So they can't grow. They can't grow. You have to get one of these lives poured out. You either decide to become wicked and sinful like you were, or if you want to grow, you pick up the cross to get it poured out. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Verse 6 says, For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone, not some, amen, whom he loves, amen, and he punishes, even scourge, he thorough with it, amen, every son who, amen, whom he accepts and welcomes, amen, to his hearts and church. God said, every son of mine, and I'm sorry, he said, I've got to extreme, amen, even scourge them, to make sure that sinful life is not in them. He said, every son that I cherish, God said, I cherish my son. Every son that I brought to my heart and I cherish, he got, I discipline them, I will punish them to make sure that that life that makes them struggle against themselves, against does sin make, sin make you not struggle against you? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that makes you struggle against? Everything. Everything. Even God. The Bible says, amen. 
They, they, they even God, they're, they're fighting, if they make you fight against God, you fight against yourself, you fight against your fellow man, you fight against your destiny, you fight even the enemy, you're fighting everyone and everything. So in opposition to everything. Everything. You pick up fights where you don't even understand the cause of the fight. Just because the, you just this constant. This, you ever watch this in children? At a certain point in a child's life, everything becomes what? No. When a baby starts to grow, yeah. But does the baby understand why they say no? No. Something in them at a certain point, my kids are small at a certain point. No. No. Ask them why they say no. Well, what is that force? What starts this opposition to everything? <laughs> Sin starts to amen, raise its head, to resist. Your parents that everything is no. Have your food now. Come No. Where does that come from? Did the parents sit there and go, say no, say no, say no? No, that doesn't happen. How come does it suddenly emerge? It's opposition. It fights against everything. Mm -hmm. God said, Amen. <coughs> you, cannot, you, you cannot even stop it yourself. You try. So you'll find the Lord will discipline you completely, thoroughly. Thoroughly. Because He said, I cherish you. I love you. He said, I'll put out scourge you. That, that sin that amen, likes to fight and like opposition will not operate in you. And He said, I will do this. Amen. Amen. So you can have, amen, the life you ought to have. I was watching a show yesterday with my wife, and I heard a line that I really liked. There's a girl talking, and she goes, um, we confuse independence and freedom. I go, I'll true this. We confuse independence and freedom. Independence, as you say, you want, you want your own way. Just, you know, I, I want to do things this way, and when I want, etc. Mm -hmm. Amen. But f or even when you're independent, you still have to, under the influence of someone or something. But freedom is to, the ability to be what you ought to be without anything what? Interfering with it. You're free, you could call it in a way that's the normal way. What? If you're supposed to fly, you can fly. You can have independent things, supposed to fly, and you can't fly. No. <laughs> freedom is to have the right to be what you ought to be without anyone or anything what? Interfering with it. Nothing is forcing it this way or that way. Now, everyone, God is made to be a particular, unique way. Independence, you know, doesn't get you to do that. You need freedom. This is where the spirit of the Lord is what? Freedom. You're free to be what you ought to be. You're free to be what you ought to be. The scriptures are for the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom he loves and punishes, even scourge. Every son whom he accept and welcome, amen, to his heart and cherish it. God said, I love my children, I cherish them. And I'm going to do what it takes, I'm going to discipline them, amen, so that they can operate without a constant struggle. Please understand this. You can be independent, you're an independent country, independent, but the one thing until you get the cross, you're not independent from, is this inner struggle. Because your very life is what you're struggling with. And I'll tell you why you're struggling. If God had made you and made you wicked and then you get contaminated by wicked, would you struggle? No, you're in alignment. You're free. You're free in what, you, what you're supposed to be. This is what creates the struggle. In Genesis, how God made man? Good. Very good. So when he has something that you want to go against good, what do you think that does? Tremendous struggle. It's because of all his natural, his free design versus a forced design. This is what's creating the conflict. You have this thing that wants you to do wrong all the time. But you are made good. very good. So the Bible says, this antagonist, they are fighting this war. Paul actualized it also within me. Amen? This good and evil, this darkness and light. He said, there's this force is fighting within me. He said, I'm doing things that I don't agree with doing, which he said, which tells me it's no longer Paul said, who is doing it. Mm. I am not doing it. He said, it's the sin principle within me, forcing me to do what? It wants me. But because I don't want to do that, then I feel what? Bad. There's no freedom. Mm -hmm. There's no freedom. There is no freedom. There is no freedom. And one of the things we say in this fight, 
I just want to be independent of what? Of what? What you want is freedom. It's like Jesus said, what I free is free what? Indeed. What you need is freedom. I need, and I'll say it simple, I need to be in alignment with my design. Do you know you get peace? What creates the lack of peace? I'm operating out of my what? My natural design. If I can operate in conjunction with how I'm designed, you think I love peace? I'll say it another word for peace, ease. Mm -hmm. There's no stress on the unit. Right. What creates the lack of peace? There's stress. I'm doing things I'm not supposed to be what? Mm -hmm. Doing. I'm operating in a way not conducive with my design. You think that creates ease? Mm -hmm. No. Stress. Stress. Right. The Bible said the opposite of peace is what? Fear. <coughs> I'm going to go against my natural design. You're right. Anxiety. Because I'm anticipating the next time I'm going to go against the design. I, 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 amen. And moral what? Conflict. Mm. I'm having moral conflict because the things I'm supposed to be doing, I don't what? Do. And things I'm not supposed to be do, I'm doing. What do you think is creating me? Moral conflict. So the scripture said, amen. They have fear all the time. It's just a matter of time before I start to do crazy again. I have anxiety. You understand? I'm anticipating the next acting out mode moment. You, you see? And as, and, as, and as a result, I'm having major moral what? Conflict. The lack of peace. The scripture said, Jesus said, Amen. They don't know the way of peace. They don't fear anxiety and moral what? Conflict. God said, got, I've I got a discipline. You need to move away from that. That life that creates, that works against your design, the very good what it is to be in my image, I'm going to pour it out of you. This is one of the mystery, mystery of Christ. How can, we are, most Christians understand, we understand how Christ got rid of the blood. It was poured out. But how do I get it out of me 